Joining us now, civil rights attorney Brian Claypool. He's also the owner and managing general partner of Claypool Law Firm. Let's talk about what the attorney general just said, that, you know, crossing state lines to participate in a violent protest is a federal crime. What do you think the chances are that we see prosecution of any of these people? Hey, John, nice to be back with you. I think what Attorney General Barr did was very effective because from what we've learned, there might be upwards of 70,000 people in Minneapolis later today or tonight. A lot of those might be coming from other states. So now that you have a, a, an announcement by the Attorney General saying, we're gonna charge you with a federal crime for crossing the border to incite violence, that might very well be a deterrent. I think it's gonna have a deterrent effect, but getting back to your question, in terms of practically arresting people on the scene, I don't see that likely to happen because it's too much manpower to transport those people out, and then also it might incite more violence. Yeah, there, there have been um, tremendous protests, numbers of protests in, in cities all over the country, but relatively few arrests. Uh, the, the police have mostly been standing, standing aside, and uh, you've got to wonder if that's about to change. Yeah, I mean, it, it might change because we're bringing also in the National Guard, the, the Federal National Guard. So you might have enough reinforcement from law enforcement to start making arrests. But John, that's a tough balance. That's a tough decision to make because when you start arresting people on the scene, again, it's hard. You gotta have manpower to take them off the premise. And then again, it might escalate the situation. So I think this is more of a symbolic gesture. It's more of a deterrent. And I'm hoping and praying that it really helps tonight. In terms of, you know, the, the local uh, charges, obviously, you know, the rioting um, that has destroyed so many businesses uh, in cities around the country, that, that is a crime. But as I said, there have been relatively few arrests. And, and with the masks, as you point out, it's pretty hard to identify uh, some of the people who have been uh, causing all of this mayhem. Um, is, is this a time when a tougher hand is, is now called for? John, I really do believe you need to take a tougher hand uh, today and tonight in Minneapolis. I mean, you've got to stop uh, the violence. And I think uh, they've tried in Minneapolis to not escalate the situation, but we've seen a lot of loss, over 170 businesses destroyed. I think they need to step it up a little bit and start detaining and taking away a, a lot of these nefarious protesters. But I got to tell you, John, I think what one of the problems that might have quelled some of this tension is the lack of the U.S. attorney charging Officer Chauvin with civil rights violations. I mean, to me, being a civil rights lawyer, it's pretty obvious that Chauvin violated the civil rights. It's, an, it's what's called an unful, unlawful search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment. And, and sticking your neck on this man's, sticking your knee on this man's neck and, and knowing for over three minutes he's unconscious. I mean, that is a categorical civil rights violation. And then also, we haven't even talked about probable cause. Why did they pull over George Floyd? Being black in America is not probable cause. That could very well be another civil rights violation. So I think the sooner the U.S. attorney steps up and adds these federal criminal charges and civil rights violations, I think that might help a little bit in terms of tempering the tension. Uh, let's hope that tonight is more peaceful and far less destructive. Brian Claypool, Brian, thank you. You bet. Thanks, John.